Okay, so I think way long ago I had mentioned I would uh, show you guys the apply force and apply impulse uh, methods that you can um, use with your physics uh, bodies. And I'm going to show you guys that now. But uh, what I want to do is um, kind of just undo everything at the end of this and um, kind of set the project back to where it was. Because um, we're not going to make major changes, but um, you know, I just want to give you guys this final version here. And it's going to be called quest underscore session six dot uh, zip. And uh, if you want to now proceed with uh, some of the changes I'm going to make, feel free to unzip uh, that project and uh, go for it. And you've always got the version you can revert back to inside of the zip. All right, so uh, first thing I'll do is come down this way and make it so that when we connect with our coins, we're not going to uh, make them go off the stage. Because I want to see these guys just sort of bounce around a little bit. And that's what we'll apply our uh, impulse or force uh, two. So go over here to the um, top of the uh, level class. So just scroll all the way back up. And underneath where we've set up our characters, and by the way, I didn't minimize the delay that we uh, used to set those up. Uh, I don't see why you can't just uh, do a delay of nothing, but um, <laughs> I'm just going to keep things as they are. So uh, right down here, let's uh, perform another selector. And uh, this one will be perform selector at selector and let's say move coins with force and uh, we'll just do a delay of nil and we'll um, we'll start this after four seconds but then afterwards we'll just run it every frame so we'll come down here and write uh, void move coins with force and uh, then we're going to go and uh, iterate through all of our uh, coins in the world so I'm just going to paste in the code to do that we've seen it many times already all right uh, as you guys know our coins are all uh, named coin so this will pick out just those objects and inside of here we're just going to write uh, node dot physics body apply force and this is um, this is basically just like a CG point variable, um, and and actually in the beta versions of Xcode 5, it uh, it was called CG point. Now it's a CG vector that's being asked for. So you just write CG vector make, and then you just pretty much just d define the direction that you're going to go with this. So a uh, force of negative one would be going to the left, and a force of one would be going to the right, and a force of uh, negative one on the Y would be going down and uh, likewise uh, the opposite for going up. So uh, now that'll that'll push our coins back into the uh, the bottom left but if we were to run this right now we're not going to really see um, too much of that effect because uh, let's go over here and research a little bit. It says um, applies force uniformly to a physics body. This me method accelerates the body without imparting any angular acceleration to it. The acceleration is applied for a single simulation step, one frame. So, uh, to really see some impact from this, what we should do is write uh, self, oh, actually we can just copy this. So we're just going to run this again. Uh, this time though, we'll make it go at the frame rate. So that'll be, um, or approximately, so 1 divided by 60. And of course we could also just put this down in our update method, but it's a little easier to um, to just write it right here for, for experimentation purposes. And now, um, while this is building, I'll say that our, oh well, here we go, it's already ready. Okay, so here's our little guys, everybody, and sure enough, there's our coins. Bouncing around down there, they all got uh, moved into the bottom left. <sighs> kind of some interesting effects. Uh, now, one thing that uh, we should be aware of is that my uh, code in here that says, let me search for it by NS object, NS object. Okay, these lines cancel pre previous perform requests with target. Uh, this would have to be, this should be something that I look into uh, getting, away, getting away from later on. There's only two instances of it. I know for sure getting rid of the one where we, um, where they collide into the wall is kind of an optional one. But uh, basically what's happening is we're canceling previous perform requests. So that means that lines like this are getting canceled when we run into the wall. So uh, just keep that in mind. We'll um, 
Something to think about replacing later. All right, and then uh, let's do the same thing, but uh, move coins with uh, impulse. And uh, we will just change this to apply impulse. Uh, this time around, though, let's um, let's make it quite an impulse. Let's go and make this 30 and 30 so that we go in the other direction. And uh, to do a little research on it, it says uh, without, well, basically it's, um, it doesn't have any mention this, of this running at a single frame, right? So we're, ba so we're just kind of giving it this big push and um, you'll see the effect of that, uh, well, in one moment here. <laughs> Uh, let's replace this with that, and um, we could uh, we could run the same impulse again, but not at the frame rate. That'd be too much. Let's do it every like ten seconds. Okay, so just making sure this one's not run at all. All right. Boom. And they're all just kind of colliding and moving around like that. So they've got a lot of energy in them. And then they're starting to slow down. And then we kick them forward again like that. And you can see the, these uh, are rotating. I did have the rotation allowed for um, the, the coins. Uh, something to experiment with would be changing the coin mass. So you could go over here and write self.physicsbody.mass. And I'm assuming the default is, I don't, I don't even know what I want to assume the default is. I think it's one, but let's change it to five and see how that affects things. And of course, for reference, you can always go over here and just click on your documentation. And you can see all the things that uh, you can, the properties you can set and things like that. Uh, density would be another interesting one to play with. Um, but when you kind of go through here, there's really not, that many things that we haven't talked about. I'm not going to discuss joints in this um, in this video tutorial, but like we've looked at uh, both of these, uh, use precise collision detection. We could always set that right now, which is going to uh, for fast-paced objects. Which these are getting to be kind of fast-paced objects. We could um, allow that. And let's see, affected by gravity. We've looked at all these three. Uh, creating edge-based physics bodies or volume-based physics bodies. We've already done that. Edge-based ones are just um, you're, you're only creating an edge from them. All right, and I believe that with all of these, they don't move. I don't think they're ever set to dynamic. All right, so uh, let's run it again. And again, this time our mass is uh, up to five, so we'll see how that affects things. Ooh, yeah, that uh, <laughs> they're a lot heavier now, aren't they? They're certainly not. Moving around. Let's see if I can even push one of them. Yep, having trouble pushing these guys. At least it feels that way. Yeah, I can look at that. I can barely kind of like walk around them. <laughs> That's so cool. So that would be something to play around with when, um, whenever you're creating kind of level blocks inside of here. If you were making something like a maze, maybe you could have blocks that uh, are pushable but are just really strong, you know? And you could um, you could have really light objects too that, uh, you know, things just like leaves that are just kind of floating around the board and uh, get kicked up by gusts of wind, which in theory could be your, uh, your little impulses there. So let's set our coins back down to, um, let's try these at three now. Be curious to see if they even move at all. Yeah, so our, I'm, I'm guessing our default is probably not even one. Maybe it's like 0.2 or something. Oh, springboard failure. Come on now. Let's see if it launches this time. And the, um, the restitution is how bouncy they are. I think we already talked about that. Uh, looks like I've just got to quit out of the simulator altogether. Um, just kind of over here on the side reading some of these linear dampening. 
uh, property that is used to simulate fluid or air friction forces on the body. So this is a CG float value. The property must be a value between zero and one. So that um, that could come in handy if we were going to um, kind of put the, the character seemingly in water or something like that. Slow them down. Yeah, even at one, these are a lot uh, a lot so slower than they were before. I'm surprised that the mass doesn't tell you a default value for it. Well, the mass and density are properties interrelated. Oh, I guess it's just like in real life, huh? Density. I'm just curious to see if density has a. All right, the default value is one of that. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so uh, that's that's kind of really all I had to show you guys with this. But uh, you know, you can think about some really interesting games. Maybe um, <clears throat> transforming the code where you. Um, on contact, you never you don't destroy the coins, but maybe when you are actually um, slashing at them or trying to damage them, only then uh, are, are is the coin um, you know altered. Like, and then if they're just kind of scattered around the the board, moving around, it would make it obviously a lot more fun <laughs> to play because you've kind of got to chase after these guys. And um, there's a lot to think about now. Uh, the, I think countless games could be based off of uh, at least just the setup that we have so far, but uh, in the future we'll look at uh, RPG games part two and uh, add all sorts of level fun and enemies and things like that. So hang tight. There will be more, but you guys have gotten like seven or eight hours of tutorials out of this one session. So I'm out of here. I'm signing off. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it.